The world is divided enough. We are organizing a World Cup. We're not organizing a war. We organize a World Cup where people, where people who have many problems, everyone in his or her life, want to come and enjoy. Look at the city. It's beautiful. Uh, it's sad that we cannot focus on football. These were the words of FIFA President Gianni Infantino as he addressed the press on the eve of the 2022 FIFA World Cup. The World Cup in Qatar has made headlines and brought the word sports washing to the forefront on multiple occasions. While the word may have entered public memory only recently and is being talked about at length only now, let's look at this other picture. This too was yet another example of sports washing at its height, but one doesn't see the same criticism. While it is true that the sports washing debate has gained a lot more ground of late, it would be wrong to assume that it has only been a new and one-off thing. So in this FIA Explains video, we try and break down what sports washing is and how it impacts the larger global socio-political system of human rights violations. What is sports washing? As the saying goes, sports has the power to unite people. We have witnessed time and again how sports brings together people from different backgrounds, ages and countries. But this very factor also has a dark side to it. Due to its unifying factor, sports is also increasingly instrumentalized to distract the world and to cover up corrupt practices and human rights violations. Sports washing is a practice adopted by cruel, unjust, fascist nation-states and powerful individuals to use sports and major international sporting events to improve their reputation by hosting these events, purchasing teams in major sporting leagues or through sponsorship of sporting teams. Sports washing has been used by countries over the years to lift their image on the global platform and divert attention away from human rights violations and abuses in the country. Some of the biggest examples of sports washing are visible in the biggest leagues across the world like the English Premier League, Champions League, Grand Prix, the Indian Premier League, among a host of others. Now let us look at the history of sports washing. While the term sports washing was only coined recently, the practice has been widespread for over decades. The second edition of the FIFA World Cup in 1934 was hosted by Mussolini's Italy and the 1936 Olympic Games was held in Hitler's Berlin where these events were used to legitimize these regimes and promote their totalitarian ideas. During the Nazi Olympics in Germany, political figures and industrialists who earlier had reservations about Adolf Hitler witnessed the successful Berlin Games and were persuaded to believe that Hitler could make Germany strong again. The FIFA World Cup of 1978, which was held in Argentina, was also another prime example when the country's military dictatorship was crushing dissent and torturing those who opposed it. One of the most recent incidents of large-scale sports washing was seen at the last edition of the 2018 FIFA World Cup in Russia. The World Cup took place despite an escalating crackdown on peaceful critics, curbing dissent, among others. The successful sporting events in Russia acted as cover for President Vladimir Putin and acted as an image booster. It warrants noting that Russia is currently banned from the tournament following its invasion of Ukraine. Let us now look at Qatar, the sports washing and the problematics around it. A Guardian investigation found that more than 6,500 migrant workers from Bangladesh, India, Nepal, Pakistan, Sri Lanka have died in Qatar since 2010. Approximately three dozen people have passed away while working directly on World Cup constructions. These workers were the ones who worked on building not just the stadiums, but also the hotels and the roads which the players and fans are currently staying in. Human Rights Watch also revealed that close to 100,000 migrant workers experienced grave labour abuses while helping Qatar prepare for the World Cup and they are yet to receive any financial compensation. While the Qatar government in 2017 introduced measures to protect foreign labourers from working in very hot weather by limiting their working hours and improving the condition in workers' camp, a 2021 report by Human Rights Watch said that the workers were still suffering from illegal wage deductions and were facing months of unpaid wages for long hours of work. While the criticism of human rights abuses and violations against Qatar is serious and needs to be taken into account, one must also note that when it comes to sports washing, the criticism becomes extremely selective when it comes to Western and non-Western nations. 
Western media and analysts and commentators would have us believe that Qatar has started the debate of sports washing, but it is absolutely incorrect. It feeds into the stereotype that the West has for those in South Asia and the Middle East of being corrupt, conservative and the other. Why is it important to talk about sports washing? What sports washing does is make people believe that the world of sports and the real world are operating in two separate bubbles. Sports washing enables states to infiltrate society and buy positive opinion and public perception. The fans of the sport and the teams and individuals involved in the ecosystem then become part of the complicit system that is working to launder a certain oppressor state's image. Sports in the 21st century has moved far beyond the game itself. It is now a power contest and is slowly moving towards becoming more about money, status and image. We have seen in this edition of the FIFA World Cup in Qatar how teams and fans in their own ways have voiced their protest against the Qatar World Cup body and support for Palestinians through various gestures. Sports and sporting events are perhaps some of the biggest platforms to send out such messages and make a strong point. It is high time that sports is made a socio-political instrument to take a stand.